Welcome to this event. My name is Angel Salio. I'm an associate professor of Roman studies at Duke and the director of the Center for French and Francophone Studies. Just a few words about the organization today. This is going to be a true bilingual event. Uh, Felwin Sarr will give his talk in French with a consecutive translation into English. I'm very grateful for Amelia Parento to be serving as the interpreter and for Kelsey White uh, to be giving me uh, much needed help with technology. Following Felwin Sarr's talk, we will take Ashin Membe's response and then questions from the audience. You can use the chat feature to send your questions in both English and French after the talk. And please note that this event is recorded. So I ask you to use your video and sound. Um, you should be all muted, in fact. Um, with much discretion. So if you can uh, turn off your video during Felwin's and Ashil's speech, and, and then we can turn it on again uh, if you have questions later on. And before we start, I would like to remind everyone that this online event, like all events organized by the Center, are made possible thanks to institutional support, including funding some, from the cultural services of the French Embassy and the Office of the Dean of Arts and Sciences at Duke. Today, I would like to thank personally Pascal Beyaert, Cultural Atlanché in Atlanta, who has done a lot of work for channeling our collective energy. Indeed, this event is not only part of the series on inequity on its contemporary forms, but also launches a new series of events on hospitality. So please mark your calendars for March 31st at noon East. Uh, Felwin Saar and myself will be in conversation with dancers and choreographers, Rachin Umrandan and Sidi Labi-Sherkawi on hospitality and gesture. This event will be moderated by Michael Klein, director of the MFA program in dance at Duke. It's a great joy and honor to be welcoming my two distinguished colleagues today, Felwin Saar and Ashley Membe, at the Center for French and Francophone Studies. Felwin Saar is Anne-Marie Bryan Distinguished Chair in Roman Studies at Duke University. Before he joined us last September, he was Dean of the Economics and Management Faculty of the University, of the University Gaston Berger of Saint Louis and head of the new Faculty of Civilization, Religions, Arts and Communication of the same university and for which he was in charge of the implementation. In addition to his work as an academic, Felwin Saar is a writer. He was awarded the Grand Prix of Literary Association in 2016 for his essay entitled Afrotopia, published by Philippe Rey. Moreover, he has published Daich, by, published by Gallimard in 2009, 105 Rue Carnot, published by Mémoire d'Ancrier in 2011, Méditation Africaine, again at Mémoire d'Ancrier in 2012, and his last opus, La Saveur des Derniers Maîtres, uh, I think last, last January, at Philippe Rey again. Felwin Saar is also an accomplished musician. He has published three musical pieces, Civilisation au Barbarie in 2000, Les Mots du Russie in 2005, and Versailles in 2007. With the writers Boubacar Boris Diop and Nafisa Toudia, he confronted the publishing house Jinsan. In October 2006, Sar and Achille Membe founded the Atelier de la Pensée in Dakar and Saint Louis. In 2018, Ferwin Sar and French art historian Benedict Savoy we are commissioned a report by the President of France, Emmanuel Mar Macron, on the possibilities of restitution of the African cultural heritage from France to Africa. Following this rapport sur la restitution du patrimoine culturel africain, Benedict Savoy and Felwin Saar were ranked third most important personalities by Art Review right after the Black Lives Matter movement, which I think is quite a considerable achievement. Ashin Membe is currently professor at the Wits Institute for Social Economic Research at the University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg, South Africa, and has long-term connection with Duke University, where he has been a visiting professor for many years. And in fact, I think the first event 
I was on a panel with was with Achille at Duke about 10 years ago. So that speaks to the affiliation with this university as well. Membe most well-known works are De la Post-Colonie, Essay sur l'imagination politique dans l'Afrique contemporaine, On the Post-Colonie in 2000, Sortir de la Grande Nuit, Essay sur l'Afrique décolonisée in 2003, Critique de la raison nègre in 2013, translated by Laurent Dubois as Critique of Black Reason, Politique de l'inimitié um, in 2020, Brutalisme. Membe has added the important concepts of necropolitics to the analysis of contemporary forms of neoliberal power. Please join me in welcoming Professor Berwin Sa on Ashin Membe at the Center for French and Francophone Studies for a beautifully titled talk, Cosmopolitique de l'Hospitalité, Cosmopolitics of Hospitality, which has, I must say, a very European ring. Uh, but certainly a much needed one in our pandemic times. So thank you and welcome. Un grand merci à Angel euh, pour l'invitation à ces transatlantic lectures et un grand merci aussi à Achille d'avoir accepté d'en être le répondant. So uh, welcome everybody. I will speak in French. Uh, la question de la cosmopolitique de l'hospitalité, c'est une question que j'explore depuis un certain temps. Euh, depuis mon tout petit essai « Habiter le monde » et euh, dans la lecture que je vais donner aujourd'hui, j'aimerais bien j'aimerais prolonger un peu la, la réflexion entamée dans « Habiter le monde » et lui donner, je dirais, un tournant un peu plus pratique. Euh, l'hospitalité a souvent été vue ou penser comme une obligation qui est nichée au cœur des pratiques des sociétés humaines. Donc une obligation d'accueillir celui qui vient et que l'on nomme étranger. Emmanuel um, Kant. Yes. Uh, so thank, <laughs> um, thank you very much, uh, Anne Gaëlle, for having me here, and to Achille for having accepted uh, the invitation to be in conversation with me today. I'm thrilled to be presenting as part of this transatlantic event. Um, The cosmopolitics of hospitality is a subject that I've explored for quite a while now. Um, in fact, you could say since my first attempts to understand uh, the world. Um, at this point in my career, I've uh, prolonged and um, deepened my reflection into something a little bit more practical. Uh, and so now I will present to you uh, this paper, The Cosmopolitics of Hospitality. Hospitality has often been thought of as an obligation tucked into the heart of human society's practices, welcoming those who come and who are considered to be strangers. Emmanuel Kant, en affirmant que tout étranger a le droit de ne pas être traité en ennemi, en a fait un problème éthique. Et la question que j'explore ici, elle est liée au projet de la constitution d'un monde commun. Elle est celle de réfléchir à comment on passe de l'injonction éthique du devoir d'hospitalité à un droit à l'hospitalité. Emmanuel Kant, in stating that every stranger has the right not to be treated as an enemy, made it an ethical issue. The question I'm exploring, tied to the project of a constitution for a shared world, is reflecting on how to move from the ethical injunction of the duty of hospitality to the right to, to hospitality. En fait, il s'agit pour moi de réfléchir à comment passer de la faveur au droit en instituant un principe euh, pragmatique qui relèverait d'une cosmopolitique de l'hospitalité comme une réponse aux impasses des politiques migratoires d'un monde qui fait inexorablement l'expérience de sa condition cosmopolite. So, how to move from conceiving of it as a favor to a right by instituting a pragmatic principle which will raise up to a cosmopolitics of hospitality as a response to the impasses of migratory politics which relentlessly shape the experience of this world's cosmopolitan condition. Je commencerai par interroger l'hospitalité comme une pratique sociale immémoriale et le rapport qu'elle entretient avec l'altérité. Ensuite, je, je poserai la question de comment repolitiser l'hospitalité au regard de la condition cosmopolite du monde et avec comme interrogation sous-jacente, comment fonder une communauté globale ou mondiale. 
I'll begin by examining hospitality as a uh, immemorial social practice and looking at its connections to practicality, then moving out towards a more global practice of a shared world and common hospitality. En troisième lieu, j'explorerai la forme juridique que pourrait revêtir une cosmopolitique de l'hospitalité, ainsi que son corollaire, la nécessité d'une justice économique globale. Et enfin, j'explorerai hors des cultures gréco-latines et judéo-chrétiennes, des ressources qui, qui lui permettent de penser un espace social vaste à l'échelle de l'humanité et de construire un monde commun. Um, in my third part, I will uh, consider the jurisdictional forms that will um, necessitate uh, an economic global structure that is reconceiving ho of hospitality. And finally, I'll look at the uh, Greek, Latin, and Christian forms that have uh, dominated the world thus far, calling them into question as we reconsider uh, what we how we can create a shared common world with a um, vast global space. Les sociétés humaines, donc quelle que soit leur géographie et les aires culturelles, ont, ont longtemps partagé la sagesse d'accueillir celui qui est de peu passage, celui qui va rester un moment, celui qui va repartir ou celui qui va finir par euh, s'établir. Human societies, whatever their geography or cultural area, have for a long time shared the wisdom of welcoming those who are traveling through, who are staying for a moment and leaving or end up making a home. Anne du, Anne du Fourmentel rappelle que la loi d'une inconditionnelle hospitalité, donc c'est-à-dire une, une hospitalité sans condition de réciprocité et quelle que soit l'identité de celui ou celle qui arrive, apparaît dans toutes les sociétés primitives, sans doute parce qu'elle est l'une des lois fondatrices de toute civilisation. Anne du Fourmentel reminds us that the law of an unconditional hospitality, that is to say, without the condition of reciprocity and no matter the identity of he or she who arrives, appears in all prim primitive societies, certainly because it is one of the fundamental laws of every civilization. Cette loi immémoriale nous rappelle la condition première exilique de l'humanité et la règle de l'hospitalité inconditionnelle constitue ce rappel du fait que celui qui le soit peut à son tour du jour au lendemain être jeté sur les routes et avoir besoin d'asile. This immemorial law reminds us, she specifies, of the first condition of exile of humanity. The rule of unconditional hospitality constitutes this reminder of the fact that he who receives can in his turn from one day to the next be thrown out on the road and in turn need asylum. Cette loi de l'hospitalité nous rappelle aussi l'universalité de notre condition vulnérable, mais aussi notre condition de mortel et de passant. Et la règle de l'hospitalité, elle relève d'une intelligence de la possible réversibilité de la condition de l'accueillant et de l'accueilli. It reminds us of the universality of our vulnerable condition, but also of mortals and as mortals and travelers. The rule of hospitality thus reveals an intelligence of the possible reversibility of the role of welcomer and welcomed. Dans cette hospitalité originelle, nulle condescendance, l'étranger était reçu comme un roi, et en ce sens, l'hospitalité est un acte politique. C'est sans doute ce que traduit la racine latine du mot hospitalité. Hostis, qui signifie à la fois l'hôte, donc l'invitant et l'invité, et l'ennemi. In this original hospitality, there is no condescension. The rule was that the stranger was received as a king. In this sense, hospitality is a political act. No doubt this translation reflects the Latin root of the word hospitality, hostis, which signifies the host, the guest, and the enemy. Uh, cependant, cette racine commune de l'hospitalité et de l'hostilité, souligne la mémoire inquiète chez l'accueillant que l'accueilli soit toujours potentiellement un, un ennemi. This shared root of hospitality and hostility underlines an unsettling memory in the host that the guest might potentially be an enemy. Et Derrida donc souligne l'impossibilité de cette hospitalité inconditionnelle qui est obligée de s'inscrire dans, dans la particularité d'une loi avec les limites que celle-ci impose à l'inconditionnalité, de par son lot de droits et de devoirs, mais je ne me sentirai pas sur, sur cet aspect des choses. 
Derrida describes the impossibility of this unconditional hospitality as being a mandatory written part of the particularity of a law with the limits laws must impose on unconditioned unconditionality by their existence as rights and duties. I, however, will not weigh myself down with this aspect of the argument. L'accueil de, de l'étranger, en dépit de son versant lumineux, est et demeure une épreuve. Il s'agit d'abord d'accepter l'étrangeté de celui qui vient. Euh, Michel Agier indique que accueillir l'étranger, c'est éprouver son intrusion. Welcoming a stranger, despite its luminous aspect, is a challenge. First of all, one must accept the strangeness of he who is arriving. Michel Agier writes a stranger to face his intrusion. Pour celui qui reçoit, donc l'hôte, il faut renoncer provisoirement à une, une part de son monde propre. Il lui faut partager son espace, son temps et ses ressources. Mais il s'agit aussi, donc toujours sur Michel Agier, de ne pas laisser l'étrangeté de l'hôte au seuil et de ne pas effacer l'étrangeté de l'hôte. For he who opens his doors, the host, he must temporarily give up a part of his own world, time, space, resources. But it also requires, still according to Agier, not to leave the strangeness of the guest at the door, not to erase it. Il s'agit de ne pas faire comme si l'étranger n'en était pas un. Celui qui arrive est souvent étranger à ma langue, à mes coutumes et mes us et porte en lui le masque énigmatique de, de l'altérité. To not act as if the stranger wasn't a stranger. He who arrives is often a stranger to my language, my customs, and my habits, and wears upon himself the enigmatic mask of otherness. Aussi, euh, l'hospitalité, qu'elle soit envisagée ou pensée comme une obligation éthique ou morale, une question sociale, culturelle ou politique, pose d'abord la question de l'identité de celui que l'on accueille. Hospitality, whether thought of as a moral obligation, a social, cultural, or political question, first poses the question of the identity of he who one is welcoming. Il faut cependant souligner que la condition de l'hôte n'est pas forcément liée à celle de l'étranger. On devient hôte par la relation instituée, pas par l'hospitalité. Ici, c'est la relationnalité qui prime et qui définit la condition d'hôte plus que l'étrangeté. However, one must highlight that the condition of the host isn't necessarily connected to that of the stranger. One becomes a host by, through the relationship created by hospitality. Here, the relationality taking precedence is what defines the host's condition more than the strangeness. L'une des questions qui va nous occuper, c'est qui est l'autre? Qui est l'autre que l'on accueille? One of the questions we will address is who is the other? Who is the one who is being welcomed? Alors, l'autre avec un A minuscule est mon prochain et mon semblable. Et l'autre avec un A majuscule est ce qui, dans cette proximité, m'échappe, expression d'une altérité radicale qui surgit dans tout rapport d'identité et qui le fonde, précise euh, Denis Vass. So the other with a lowercase o is my neighbor, my fellow human. The other with an uppercase O is he who escapes me in this proximity, an expression of radical otherness, which appears in every report of identity and which is foundational, writes Denis Vess. L'autre, toujours avec un A minuscule, est objet d'un besoin, souvent réductible aux données qui s'organisent dans l'enceinte de ma connaissance. L'autre, donc avec A minuscule, est, est constamment réduit à mon moi connaissant. The other, with the lowercase o, is the object of a need, often reducible to data which can organize itself in the interior of my knowledge. The other is constantly reduced to my self-knowledge. L'autre, au contraire, avec un grand A, avec un A, A majuscule, est ce qui, dans cette activité réductrice, reste en dehors du champ de ma connaissance et n'est jamais totalement envisagé, vu ou perçu. Uh, the other, with a capital O, by contrast, is he who, in this, uh, is actively reduced. He remains beyond the field of my knowledge and is never completely understood. Aussi, la relation signifiée par l'hospitalité est un mode de connaissance qui me permet de réduire cette altérité. Elle rapproche ce qui est lointain. Ainsi, l'autre est rendu, est rendu proche par l'accueil. 
The relationship signified by hospitality is a way of knowing that allows me to reduce this otherness. It brings close that which is far away, just like the other is brought close through welcoming. Il s'agit d'éviter que l'autre minuscule soit infiniment autre à majuscule en apprivoisant son étrangeté. Et dans la relation qui institue l'hospitalité, il y a la production individuelle d'un régime de familiarité que la politologue camerounaise Nadine Machiko appelle un régime du proche. It allows us to avoid the other, lowercase o, being forever the other, uppercase o, by taming his strangeness. In the relationship which constitutes hospitality, there's the individual production of a method of familiarity which the Cameroonian political scientist Nadine Machiku calls the system of closeness. L'hospitalité prévoit également son dépassement dans l'incorporation sociale, dans l'inclusion ou dans le rejet et le départ de celui qui était lui précédemment accueilli. Hospitality also foresees its own end through social incorporation, inclusion, or rejection or departure. Là, je vais m'intéresser à la question de la repolitisation de la question de, de l'hospitalité. Comment la repolitiser et la sortir de, de l'espace de la pratique sociale immémoriale. So now let's focus on uh, repoliticizing the question of hospitality. Depuis 2000, Uh, 40 000 personnes sont mortes aux frontières européennes. L'Europe, en se protégeant des étrangers venant d'Afrique et du Moyen-Orient, produit des morts. Marina Garcès souligne qu'en faisant cela, elle se meurt aussi et que c'est une mort partagée. Since 2000, 40,000 people have died on the European borders. Europe, by protecting itself from strangers coming from Africa and the Middle East, results in death. Marina Garces outlines in how, in doing so, Europe kills itself as well. It is a shared death. Cette mort partagée n'est pas de même nature, bien évidemment, ni, ni à la même échelle. En plus de l'érosion des idéaux humanistes et des valeurs qu'elle professe et dont elle se réclame, l'Europe meurt à son humanité. It's a death not of the same type, nor at the same level. In addition to the erosion of its humanist ideals and values that it professes and prides itself on, Europe's humanity is dying. Elle s'est projetée dans le monde euh, pendant plusieurs siècles, euh, conquérant et, et colonisant terres et mers, ressources, bras valides, au service de son projet d'expansion et d'enrichissement. Aujourd'hui, le monde est en elle et elle refuse d'en être affectée. It has launched itself into the world over several centuries, conquering and colonizing lands and seas, resources, strong arms, all in the service of its project of expansion and enrichment. Today, the world is within the continent and it refuses to be affected by it. De même, les migrants latino-américains en route vers les États-Unis sont de plus en plus nombreux à mourir à la frontière entre le Mexique et le Guatemala. Just in the same manner, Latin American migrants are en route, to, en route to the United States are dying in larger and larger numbers on the border between Mexico and Guatemala. Dans un travail de recension des morts aux frontières, Antoine Pecou note que si le projet de Donald Trump de construire un mur de séparation entre les USA et le Mexique a joué un rôle clé dans son élection en 2016, la militarisation de cette frontière a en réalité débuté dans les années 90. Antoine Pécu, in a comparative analysis of the deaths at borders, notes that even if Donald Trump's project to construct a wall to separate the USA and Mexico played a key role in his election in 2016, the militarization of this border truly began in the 1990s. Elle a conduit les migrants en provenance du Mexique et d'Amérique centrale à prendre des risques pour échapper au contrôle, ce qui a provoqué des centaines de décès essentiellement dû dans cette région désertique à de la déshydratation et de l'hypothermie. It has driven migrants from Mexico and Central America to take risks to escape the border police, which provoked hundreds of deaths essentially caused by, in this desert region, dehydration and hypothermia. De l'autre côté du Pacifique, l'Australie lutte également farouchement contre l'arrivée de migrants et de réfugiés, en particulier lorsque ces derniers tentent d'embarquer depuis l'Indonésie ou le Timor, comme en Europe, c'est surtout suite à des naufrages que surviennent les décès de migrants qui sont originaires d'Asie du Sud-Est ou d'Afghanistan. 
On the other side of the Pacific, Australia fights furiously against the arrival of migrants and refugees, particularly when the latter try to take boats from Indonesia or Timor, just like in Europe. Usually it is following storms that migrants from Southeast Asia or Afghanistan are killed. Une des évolutions des politiques migratoires contemporaines est l'extension du contrôle en amont et en aval des frontières. En amont, les migrants sont interceptés dans des pays dits de transit, dont les gouvernements reçoivent en échange des aides financières et en soutien logistique. One of the evolutions of contemporary migratory politics is the extension of control, both upstream and downstream, of the borders. Upstream, migrants are intercepted and in countries called countries of transit, whose governments receive financial aid in exchange as well as logistical support. For Europe, it's the Maroc, l'Ukraine, la Turkey, or encore la, la Libye qui joue les Cerbères. En Amérique du Nord, it's the Mexique qui joue ce role de limiter le nombre de migrants qui arrivent. Aux portes des, des États-Unis. For, for Europe, it's Morocco, Ukraine, Turkey, or even Libya who play the role of guard dogs. In North America, it's Mexico that plays this role, limiting the number of migrants who arrive at the doors of the United States. Cette externalisation des contrôles migratoires a contribué à, à mondialiser le phénomène des morts aux frontières, surtout que lorsque ces pays tiers, dont certains d'entre eux sont généralement très peu soucieux des droits des migrants, use de méthodes brutales pour s'acquitter des tâches qui leur sont confiées. Il est important, il est cependant important de souligner que dans ces pays, des militants de droits de l'homme, à rebours des États, procurent des soins aux migrants et défendent leurs droits. This externalization of migratory controls has contributed to the globalization of the phenomenon of deaths along the borders. Certainly, while these third party countries generally little concern for the rights of migrants, use brutal methods to accomplish the often despicable tasks which are assigned to them. Le, le désert du Sahara est ainsi devenu une des régions les plus mortelles pour les migrants d'origine d'Afrique subsaharienne qui ambitionne de gagner les rives de la Méditerranée et de s'embarquer pour l'Europe. The Saharan Desert has thus become one of the most fatal regions for migrants originating from Sub-Saharan Africa, who try to access the shores of the Mediterranean to sail to Europe. Certains pays européens sont eux-mêmes confrontés à ces migrations de transit. À Calais, où par exemple des migrants meurent régulièrement en tentant de franchir la frontière entre la France et la Grande-Bretagne. Certain European countries are themselves confronted with these migrations in transit. In Calais, for example, migrants regularly die trying to cross the border between France and Great Britain. La mort aux frontières, comme le suggère Weber et Pickering, résulte d'une violence structurelle à l'égard des migrants, c'est-à-dire d'un ensemble multiforme de violences perpétrées par des acteurs de différentes natures, mais au sein desquelles les États jouent un rôle déterminant. La violence des passeurs et celle des pays de transit faisant écho à celle des politiques migratoires des États. Deaths at the borders, as Weber and Pickering write, are the result of a structural violence in regards to migrants. That is to say, a multifaceted collection of violences perpetrated by actors of different natures, but at the heart of which nations play a determining role. The violence of smugglers and that of countries of transit thus echoes that of nations' migratory politics. Nous vivons cependant dans un monde dont la condition cosmopolite est de plus en plus partagée et inéluctable. En 2020, on a 270 millions de migrants internationaux dans le monde et celle-ci nous fait vivre cette condition cosmopolite dans plus d'une société et nous serons de plus en plus amenés à vivre dans plus d'une société. We are, however, living in a world whose cosmopolitan condition is more shared, more and more shared and inevitable. In 2020, there were 270 million international migrants. This makes us live in more than one society, and more and more, we will be forced to live in more than one society. Cette réalité nous enjoint de penser autrement les sociétés, les cultures et la place de chacun dans le monde. Le principe éthique incarné par une hospitalité individuelle ou une politique d'asile nationale est insuffisant pour répondre à la crise des États-nations face à la mobilité. This reality forces us to think differently about societies, cultures, and the place of each in the world. 
the ethical principle incarnated by an individual hospitality or a politic of national asylum is insufficient to respond to nation states crises faced with mobility. Vu l'ampleur du phénomène migratoire, sa multicausalité, une gouvernance mondiale des migrations est nécessaire. L'échelle à laquelle sont pensées les réponses à ce phénomène est inadéquate et il s'agit de passer d'une hospitalité individuelle, domestique, à une hospitalité publique. Given the scope of the migratory phenomenon, its multi-causality, and a global governance of migrations is necessary. The level at which responses to this phenomenon are thought out is inadequate. We must move away from an individual domestic hospitality towards a public hospitality. Et plus qu'un impératif d'accueil, il s'agit de travailler à une cosmopolitique de l'hospitalité et celle-ci pourrait être fondée sur plusieurs raisons. More than an imperative welcome, we must create a cosmopolitics of hospitality. This could be founded on several reasons. L'impérieuse nécessité de construire un monde commun le caractère inéluctable de notre condition cosmopolite et l'irréversibilité du fait migratoire. Il s'agit donc d'anticiper les conséquences de la réalité du destin commun de l'humanité en démontrant l'efficacité sociale, économique et politique d'une telle réponse. The imperial necessity of constructing a common world, as well as the inevitable character of our cosmopolitical condition, the irreversible fact of migration. We must anticipate the consequences of the reality of the common destiny of humanity by demonstrating the social, economic, and political efficacy of such a response. Le regretté Étienne Rutassin, donc souligné à ce propos, en pensant à l'hospitalité publique, donc je le cite, que plus qu'une morale, c'est une intelligence du monde qui vient. Elle prévient de la guerre et crée les conditions de la paix. The late Etienne Tessin emphasized uh, to this point, thinking about public hospitality, and citing him, more than a morality, it's an intelligence of the world to come. It prevents war and creates conditions for peace. Enfin, une cosmopolitique de l'hospitalité pourrait se fonder sur la reconnaissance mutuelle de notre humanité, et des conséquences qui en découlent, comme une exigence éthique fondamentale de monde commun à construire. In sum, a cosmopolitics of hospitality could be founded on a mutual understanding of our humanity and the consequences that stem from it as an ethical exigence fundamental to our common world. Alors, une fois que l'on a dit ça, donc j'aimerais m'intéresser à la délicate question de comment fonder une communauté globale mondiale ou où fonder la communauté globale et mondiale. So, uh, to move forward from there, I will now focus on the delicate question of how do we form a global community and where do we form this global community? L'un des fondements archaïques des communautés humaines et du sentiment d'appartenance à celle-ci est l'identité, entendue eux comme la langue, le territoire, les us, et hélas encore la couleur de la peau. One of the archaic foundations of human communities and emotions belonging to them is identity, such as land, language, habits, and unfortunately, skin color. L'anthropologie nous apprend que l'on se distingue des autres en établissant des limites. La démarcation, la limite, sont une nécessité pour l'identité. Je dirais une expression atavique de l'identité pourrait se formuler ainsi, nous sommes ce en quoi nous différons des autres. Anthropology teaches us that we are, we tell ourselves apart from others by establishing limits. Demarcations, limits are a necessity for identity. I could say an atavistic expression of identity could thusly be formulated, we are that in which we differ from others. La démarcation est également une nécessité pour l'altérité, car marquer la différence, c'est aussi reconnaître l'autre. Demarcation is also a necessity for otherness because by marking difference, one can also recognize the other. Une frontière peut être une limite, donc naturelle ou juridique ou administrative, mais elle peut également être un lieu de double reconnaissance et de mise en relation. A border can be a limit, natural or judicial, but it can also be a place of double recognition and creating relations. D'ailleurs, les marqueurs topographiques, que sont les fleuves, les montagnes ou les rivières, ne deviennent des frontières étatiques que par des choix politiques. Autrement, ce sont des lieux de circulation et d'échange. 
Moreover, topographical markers such as streams, mountains, and rivers don't become state borders just by political choice. Instead, these are places of circulation and exchange. Euh, Caroline Rossi précise également que les frontières sont aussi le résultat des usages des populations, de leurs pratiques spatiales et de leur territorialité subjective. Caroline Rossi outlines that borders are also the result of populations' usages, their spatial practices, and their subjective territories. Aussi, on peut s'interroger sur la défense de certains du droit de composer leur propre corps social selon leurs euh, propres règles, faire communauté avec ceux qui vous ressemblent, euh, partagent votre langue, habitent votre terroir, ont les mêmes us, ou partagent les mêmes euh, valeurs que vous. One can question certain people's defense of the right to make up their own social body according to their own rules. To make a community with those who look like you, speak your language, live on your land, have the same habits, and share the same values as you. Et comment faire quand sont toujours à l'œuvre les désirs de clôture, les replis identitaires, les populismes, et surtout comment faire avec ceux qui ne souhaitent pas faire un monde commun So what to do when the topics at hand are always desires for closure, withdrawals into identity, populism, and most of all, what to do with those who don't want to create a common world? Il s'agit plus fondamentalement, dans la perspective de la constitution d'un monde commun, de répondre à la question de savoir qui fait partie de la communauté et comment celle-ci est-elle constituée. La communauté entendue comme communauté globale et large, à quels imaginaires de l'appartenance cette communauté renvoie et comment sortir des atavismes tantôt indiqués de la terre, du terroir et de la production de l'identité par l'identique. Most fundamentally, in the perspective of the constitution of a common world, it's about responding to the question of knowing who is part of the community, how is it made up, which imaginings of belonging does it involve. In some, how do we get out of the atavisms of the earth, the land, and the production of identity by the identical? Ceci pose plus fondamentalement la question de la nature du lien entre humains au sein des sociétés humaines. This poses more fundamentally the question of the nature of the link between humans at the heart of human societies. Dans un magnifique dialogue euh, intitulé « Suis-je le gardien de mon frère » entre Jean-Pierre, Philippe, Pierron, Suleiman Bachar Diagne, Delphine Orville, Frédéric Worms et Jean-Marie Huguelette, Jean-Philippe Jean Jean, Jean Pierron nous indique et il nous rappelle que la sororité et la fraternité n'ont rien de naturel. In a fabulous document, um, I missed two of the authors' names, I'm sorry, uh, but Jean-Philippe Pierron writes in Am I the Guardian of My Brother, reminding us that sorority and fraternity aren't natural at all. Les frères sont souvent des frères ennemis. L'épopée de Gilgamesh, la Bible, qu'il appelle le livre des fraternités contrariées, en offre plusieurs illustrations. Les rivalités entre Gilgamesh et Ishtar, entre Caïn et Abel, entre Rachel et Léa. Brothers are often each other's enemies. The epic of Gilgamesh, the Bible, which he calls the great book of contrary brotherhoods, offers several illustrations, such as Gilgamesh and Ishtar, Cain and Abel, Rachel and Léa. Il rappelle que la question de la nature des liens entre les humains, immémorial et universel, a toujours hanté les sociétés humaines, bien que résonnant dans le singulier d'une culture et dans la texture d'une société spécifique. So the question of the nature of ties between humans, immemorial and universal, has always haunted human societies, although resonating in the singularity of a culture and in the texture of a specific society. Et si cette question se pose avec tant d'acuité, c'est qu'il y a une fraternité sororité qui ouvre et une qui clôt. So if this is the question that is being posed, it means that there is one type of fraternity or sorority which opens and one that closes. Tantôt elle lie, tantôt elle ligue. As much as it binds, it unites. Et comment se défaire de la fraternité qui ligue les uns contre les autres en vantant le nous identitaire du même pour une fraternité ouverte qui relie les groupes humains et invente un nouveau cosmopolitisme ou une méta-communauté. So how to deconstruct fraternity which unites some against the others by boasting about the identifying we are all the same, 
ours are not the others, to instead create an open fraternity that connects human groups and invents a new cosmopolitics or a meta community. Et qu'y a-t-il au cœur de la fraternité sororité qui semble céder à la logique de l'identité dans la substantialisation du lien ou par la biologie ou par la référence nationale envisagée comme une préférence So what is at the heart of the fraternity or sorority that appears to cede to the logic of identity in the substantialization of place by biology or national reference seen as a preference? Et peut-on trouver dans la sororité et dans la fraternité la possibilité de découvrir un lien plus large, ouvert, disponible à l'étrangeté de l'autre, du frère ou de la, ou de la sœur? Can we find in sorority and fraternity the possibility of discovering a larger, more open place available to the strangeness of the other, brother or sister? Et la question que les dialoguants se posent dans ce dialogue, c'est la fraternité, bien qu'une donnée naturelle, n'est-elle pas plutôt une tâche? So the question that uh, Pierron poses uh, is fraternity, much more than a natural given, isn't it rather a task? Donc, euh, Jean-Philippe Pierron et Bachir se demandent, euh, n'est-elle pas plutôt un travail contre la fausse évidence de l'algébrisation du lien qui fait de la fraternité une affaire de seuil, plus ou moins éloignée, de ce dont la nature, la biologie, le clan seraient les points de référence et l'unité de mesure So, a work against the false evidence of the algebraization of the place, which makes fraternity a matter of, of threshold, more or less distanced from a center whose nature, biology, or clan would be the points of reference and the unit of measure. La fraternité close s'exprime et triomphe dans la reconnaissance extérieure des signes d'appartenance. Elle n'est pensée qu'en termes du reconnaissable et de l'identifiable. Closed fraternity triumphs in the external recognition of the signs of belonging. It's only thought of in terms of recognizable or identifiable. De plus, le lien fraternel est hanté par la possibilité de la violence et de l'anéantissement, donc de la, de, la, de la proximité de hostis et de hospé. Et comment alors apprivoiser l'altérité en dehors de la surveillance et du contrôle Moreover, the fraternal bond is haunted by the possibility of violence and annihilation, the proximity of hostis and hospé. So, how to deal with the otherness apart from surveillance and control? Euh, les sociétés humaines étant en tension entre des forces destructrices, des normes pacificatrices, qui s'emploient à limiter la démesure qui les travaille, le lien n'échappe pas à cette tension. Human societies are fighting between destructive forces and pacifying norms, which are employed to limit the outrageousness which works them. The, this bond doesn't escape this tension. Euh, pour sortir de la communauté archaïque, euh, la déchirure du lien fraternel en appelle à l'invention d'un autre type de lien. Et la fraternité sororité est un travail grâce auquel la différence elle s'apprivoise s'expérimente et apprend à être compatible avec l'identique ou le similaire. So to get out of the archaic phrasing, the unraveling of the fraternal bond harkens to the invention of another type of sewing, a connection. Fraternity sorority is a work thanks to which difference is tamed, can be experimented upon, and learns to be compatible with similarity. Pour sortir aussi de la communauté archaïque qui repose sur des, des liens traditionnels fondés sur la biologie ou la nature, les communautés modernes ont tenté de s'émanciper de ces liens en fondant celles-ci sur des attentes partagées. So to leave behind the archaic community which lies on the traditional links founded by biology and nature, modern communities have tried to get free of these bonds by founding them on shared attempts. La fraternité ouverte va en s'élargissant aux autres et ces autres peuvent inclure les étrangers, bien évidemment. Si on pense aux sociétés africaines, les ancêtres et les disparus, les non-humains, ceux qui ne sont pas encore là, ceux qui doivent arriver, et le vivant dans tout son ensemble, dans son ensemble. Open fraternity will expand with others. So, of course, that includes strangers, but also, um, speaking from an African context, ancestors or the disappeared, uh, non-humans, those who aren't here yet, and those living among us. Cette sororité ouverte, donc, souligne Jean-Philippe Pierron, n'est pas d'identité, mais d'intensité. 
et elle ose se laisser aller à l'expérience prometteuse de l'autre, avec grand A. Il s'agit donc de ne plus penser la fraternité dans le langage de la surveillance, pour contenir toute, toute expression ou possible d'hostilité et de violence, mais plutôt dans celui du soin. So this open sorority isn't an identity, but rather intensity, Jean-Philippe Pierron writes. It dares to let the promising experience of the other, with a capital O, exist. Thus, it's no longer about thinking about fraternity and the language of surveillance to capture every possible expression of hostility and violence, but rather in that of care. Le soin mutuel est rendu possible par la découverte en soi-même de cette perméabilité à l'autre qui se nomme vulnérabilité. Judith Butler et Athena Athanasiou soulignent que le sujet n'est pas autosuffisant du fait des multiples dépendances et des diverses relationnalités dans lesquelles il est pris. Mutual care is made possible by the discovery in oneself of this permeability to the other, which we call vulnerability. Judith Butler writes that the subject isn't self-sufficient due to its multiple dependencies and diverse relationships in which it finds itself. Ces diverses relationnalités qui concernent le sujet peuvent être à la fois violentes et incapacitantes. One of the questions is thus, how to transform hospitality as an obligation of care in regards to a momentarily weakened life. No, on n'y est pas. Désolé. Écoutez-le, pardon. Les relationnalités, elles peuvent être à la fois violentes et incapacitantes. Relationships can therefore be violent and incapacitating. La vie subjective, reconfigurée par son extériorité, peut être l'objet de violences matérielles et politiques. Um, the subjective life can therefore be uh, determined by your relationships and also your political experiences. Et face à ces dépossessions, Nadia Yala Kisukidi propose de penser sur le plan théorique les soubassements d'un monde qui peut s'offrir comme un soutien. Um, so, uh, the, your theoretical, um, faced with the theoretical, um, uh, so based, um, pressures of the world, um, you are therefore suffering uh, out of turn. L'une des questions est donc comment transformer l'hospitalité en obligation de soins à l'égard de la vie momentanément fragilisée et l'étranger sous la figure du migrant, sans droit, incarne cette vulnérabilité, il est sans euh, socialité. So one of the questions is thus, how do we transform hospitality as an obligation of care in regards to a momentarily weakened life? The stranger in the form of a migrant without rights embodies this vulnerability. He is without sociality. Ulysse rentrant à Ithac est accueilli par Eumé Le Porcher. Ce dernier ne, ne le reconnaît pas, car Athéna l'a vieilli afin qu'on ne le reconnaisse pas et que soit complète l'épreuve de l'hospitalité. Ulysses returning to Ithaca is welcomed by Eumaeus the swineherd, and the latter doesn't recognize him because Athena made him look so old that no one would recognize him as a complete test of hospitality. Afin que Ulysse ne soit pas accueilli parce qu'il est reconnu comme faisant partie de la communauté, mais accueilli comme on le ferait pour tout étranger. Donc c'est pour ça que, que Athéna l'a dit. So uh, Athena made him look older um, so that he wouldn't be welcomed because he was recognized as part belonging to the community, but welcomed as they would for any stranger. Et Platon invite à politiser le geste de mai. Et la proposition d'une cosmopolitique politique de l'hospitalité que j'avance est celle de la constitution d'un régime politique du proche. So Plato politicizes Eumaeus' actions, and the proposition of a cosmopolitics of hospitality that I'm proposing is that of the political constitution of a system of closeness. Dans ce qui suit, donc je vais tenter de d'esquisser une forme juridique qui, qui, qui donnerait un contenu un peu plus pratique à cette idée de, de cosmopolitique de l'hospitalité. So in what follows, I'm going to propose a, a jur jurisdictional system that gives a little bit more of a practical form to the cosmopolitics of hospitality. Habiter le monde, c'est pouvoir y circuler librement et habiter pleinement ses, ses géographies. C'est faire du monde euh, 
Keep going. Living in the world is to be able to travel freely and to live fully in its geography. Faire du monde le territoire de l'espace de circulation des humains est un choix politique que nous sommes en mesure de faire. To make the world into the territory and a space for travel for humans is a political choice that we can make. La libre circulation des individus, si on y consentait, ne poserait pas tous les problèmes que l'on imagine. Free circulation of individuals, if we consent to it, would not pose all the problems that we imagine. Bien sûr, les pôles de richesse seront attractifs et ceux qui en sont privés y convergeraient. Rien n'empêche cependant d'imaginer et de travailler à des mécanismes pour mieux répartir les richesses et les ressources et veiller à une meilleure équité territoriale mondiale en dotant tous les espaces de capacité en emploi, en éducation et en santé et d'opportunités économiques. Les économistes, s'ils le souhaitent, euh, 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 savent le faire. Of course, the poles, the centers of richness will be attractive and those who have been deprived of those resources will converge there. However, nothing prevents imagining and working on the mechanisms to better distribute the riches and the resources and to ensure a better global territorial equity, bestowing all spaces with capacities for work, education, health, and economic opportunities. And if the econ economists wanted to know how to do that, they could figure it out. En œuvrant à une meilleure justice économique globale ou mondiale et en produisant les bonnes incitations, les zones à faible densité humaine pourraient attirer des populations, car offrant elles aussi les opportunités d'une vie décente et de qualité. Ceci est une exigence éthique majeure de notre époque, car les inégalités et les disparités économiques et sociales sont le fruit d'un système de production et de répartition des richesses structurellement élaboré pour profiter à une minorité d'individus au détriment du plus grand nombre. By opening up to a better global economic just system of justice and in producing uh, good strong incentives, um, zones with a smaller population density could attract populations and thus offering to them as well opportunities for a decent and good quality life. This is an ethical uh, accident, uh, exigence um, that is a huge, um, that, that runs large in our time because the inequalities and economic and social disparities are fruits of a system of production and distribution of riches and resources, which has been structurally elaborated uh, to create profit for a minority of individuals to detriment of the largest number of people. Désarticuler ce système, le, le démembrer et le reconstruire sur des bases plus équitables, en plus d'être socialement efficace, est une nécessité civilisationnelle. Les ressources de cette planète, ainsi que son patrimoine cognitif et culturel, relèvent du bien commun. Elles sont le fruit de toute l'expérience humaine. Et le simple fait d'appartenir à, à l'humanité devrait donner à toute personne le droit d'accéder à des ressources assurant euh, sa dignité. So to take, to deconstruct the system, to um, dismember it and to reconstruct it on more equitable foundations, in addition to being more uh, um, socially efficacious is a civil, civilizational necessity. The resources of this planet, as well as its um, known patri patrimony, uh, its thought-based and cultural patrimony come from a common good. They are the fruit of all human experience. The simple fact of belonging to humanity should give every person the right to access resources that would assure his dignity. On pourrait ainsi songer à une gouvernance mondiale pour, les, pour toutes les questions liées aux conditions de vie de base, sécurité, santé, nourriture, éducation, et là aussi, c'est techniquement envisageable. So thusly, we could also dream of a, a global governing body for all questions related to conditions of, uh, fundamental conditions of life, including security, health, food, and education. This is technically possible. La dernière globalisation a fait émerger des acteurs transnationaux qui, de façon différenciée et inégalitaire, certes, font déjà monde. Et un certain nombre d'activités humaines sont transnationales, déterritorialisées et dématérialisées, les flux d'informations, les flux financiers, les risques climatiques et sanitaires, ainsi que la 
ainsi que la plupart des questions sociétales, relèvent désormais de, de problématiques globales. Cependant, le traitement juridique et politique des grandes questions de notre époque est en décalage avec cette réalité-là. So the last globalization or the most recent globalization has uh, shown that there are transnational actors, they've brought them to the forefront, which uh, from inequal and uh, different, certainly from inequal and different uh, methods uh, are already creating our world. Um, a certain number of human activities are transnational, are without a territory per se or without material currency, such as um, we could say the transmission of information or the transmission of money, uh, climate risks, uh, climate and health risks, as well as the large part of social questions are raised already raising and have been raising global problems. However, the jurisdictional and political treatment of these large questions of our time is completely out of sync with this reality. En prenant la mesure de la dimension globale et transnationale du fait migratoire, il est possible de le régir par un droit commun. On pourrait par exemple créer une citoyenneté mondiale qui reconnaîtrait les droits fondamentaux des individus et qui viendrait s'ajouter à leur citoyenneté particulière. On pourrait ainsi créer un statut juridique pour les migrants, garantissant leurs droits fondamentaux et préservant ainsi leur dignité d'êtres humains. So in taking the um, temperature of the global and transnational uh, dimension of the fact of migration, um, we could, for example, create a global citizenship which recognizes the fundamental rights of individuals and which would help them add to their particular citizenships. Ces plus pérégrinants que l'on appelle migrants auraient un droit inaliénable ou qu'ils soient à la sécurité, à la santé, à l'éducation, bref, aux soins, garantis par un traité international, s'imposant aux États, donc nations. On a une culture des conventions internationales, des règles supranationales à ratifier par les États, même si on en voit les difficultés. Et une cosmopolitique de l'hospitalité aurait ainsi un contenu juridique et pratique. This um, traveler, which we call a migrant, um, would have an inalienable right um, to uh, security, to health, to education, uh, in short, to care, guaranteed by an international treaty uh, uh, overseen by nation states. This would be through an international convention or a supranational rule ratified by all the estates. Um, this way, a cosmopolitics of hospitality would also have a jurisdictional and practical container content. En 2018, à Marrakech, l'esquisse d'une telle tentative a eu lieu. L'ONU fit voter un, un pacte pour les migrations sûres, ordonnées et régulières. Le texte énonçait des principes généraux quant à l'accueil des migrants et n'imposait aucune contrainte légale aux États, respectant ainsi leur souveraineté nationale sur cette question. Et c'était un texte qui visait simplement à assurer le respect des droits de l'homme du migrant, indépendamment de son statut. In 2018, in Marrakech, the draft of such an initiative uh, took place. The UN uh, put to a vote a pact for um, secure migration, uh, which was both um, regulated and um, supported. Uh, the text uh, enunciated the general principles according to the welcome of migrants and did not impose any legal constraint uh, upon any state respecting their national sovereignty on this question. It simply attempted to assure the respect of the rights of, the, of man, of every migrant, independent of his status, his legal stature. Ce texte, bien que voté par une forte majorité d'États membres, dont 162, fut fortement décliné et n'eut aucun effet pratique. Cinq, cinq pays ont, ont voté contre, les États-Unis, la Hongrie, Israël, la Pologne et la République tchèque. Douze pays se sont abstenus, l'Algérie, l'Australie, l'Autriche, la Bulgarie, le Chili, l'Italie, la Lettonie, la Libye, le Liechtenstein, la Roumanie, la Suisse et Singapour. Et des pays, notamment la Slovaquie, étaient absents. This text was voted for, uh, voted for by a large majority of the member states, uh, 162. 
and was um, strongly uh, uh, d decried and actually didn't have any practical effect. Um, five countries voted against it, the United States, Hungary, Israel, uh, Poland, and the Czech Republic. Twelve countries um, abstained from the vote, Algeria, Australia, uh, Austria, Bulgaria, uh, Bulgaria, Chile, Italy, Lithuania, Libya, Liechtenstein, Romania, Switzerland, and Singapore, and 10 countries, notably Slovakia, were absent. Une disposition du préambule du texte, donc euh, intéressante à examiner, stipule que les migrations sont, je cite, facteurs de prospérité, d'innovation et de développement durable, et qu'une qu meilleure gouvernance peut permettre d'optimiser ses effets positifs. Et ça, c'est l'un des arguments du texte. Um, so, a uh, disposition from the uh, introduction to the text stipulates that migrations are, um, or migration is a factor of prosperity, of innovation, and of uh, durable development, and that a better uh, governmental oversight could permit an optimization of these positive effects. Le texte appelé aussi à établir, je cite, un cadre de coopération juridiquement non contraignant, je pense que c'est l'une de ses limites, afin de promouvoir une vision commune d'un phénomène inéluctable découlant de la mondialisation. The text uh, called to establish, and so citing again, a framework of jurisdictional cooperation, non-constraining, in order to promote a common vision of an inevitable phenomenon, which is uh, uh, running through globalization. Le, 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 le texte a aussi formulé des principes directeurs que je ne citerai pas ici. The, the text also cited um, uh, 10 directive principles, which I'm not going to cite here. Cette tentative ratée nous amène à penser, donc, qu'articuler une cosmopolitique de l'hospitalité par un droit fondé sur des principes humanistes est, est bien évidemment impérieux, mais insuffisant. La règle seule ne suffira pas. This attempt, me. <laughs> this failed attempt um, brings us to think of articulating a cosmopolitics of the hospitality by a right founded on humanist and imperial principles, but completely insufficient. The rule alone will not suffice. La règle seule ne suffira pas si tant est qu'on réussisse à la faire respecter, et là il y a tout un travail à faire dans le sens du respect des conventions internationales, mais il est nécessaire de produire aussi en langage des pratiques et des imaginaires de monde commun, ainsi qu'en travail sur les imaginaires de, de l'appartenance pour accompagner ce travail que j'appellerais législatif et juridique sur la, sur la normativité. Uh, so it's clear that um, the respect of international conventions is completely lacking at this point in time, and it's going to require a, a great deal of imagination to create a uh, shared world which um, has a viability and a visibility that we can all imagine and support in a practical manner. Je reviens à ce que j'ai dit, ça me semble important en fait, il est nécessaire de produire un langage des pratiques et des imaginaires de monde commun, ainsi qu'on travaille sur les imaginaires de l'appartenance en plus de la règle. Um... So it's vital that we create a language um, that could be shared, uh, in which case we can therefore have a common means of, of following those rules once we are uh, creating those rules. Les sociétés qui refusent d'accueillir les étrangers sont paradoxalement celles qui en ont le plus besoin pour leur économie, leur démographie, le renouvellement de leur culture et de leurs imaginaires pour ensemble éviter leur propre entropie. The societies which today refuse to welcome strangers are paradoxically those who have the most need of them for their economy, their demographics, the re uh, renewing of their cultures and their imaginations, uh, in total to <laughs> avoid their own entropy. L'une des questions, c'est comment le besoin de l'autre peut-il se convertir en désir de l'autre So one of the questions, one of the most important questions is how can the need of the other be converted into desire for the other? Il s'agit pour cela de penser l'hospitalité comme un acte de reconnaissance et de rencontre nécessaire fondé sur l'idée de l'incomplétude essentielle des sociétés humaines. Mm. 
um, that would require thinking about hospitality as an act of recognition and of necessary meeting founded on the idea of the, in, the essential incompleteness of human societies. Les sociétés humaines ont besoin les unes des autres. Les plus stables et les plus résilientes sont celles qui ont su articuler les mondes complémentaires qui s'offrent à elles ou qui sont potentiellement en elles. Uh, human societies have, have a need of uh, one and each other. The most stable and the most resilient are those who know how to articulate uh, complementary worlds and to navigate through complementary worlds which are offered to them or potentially are within them. L'humanité est une et plurielle et chez, et chez Anna Arendt, la politique et la gestion de cette pluralité est humaine. Humanity is one and it's also plural. Uh, politics and the management of this uh, human plurality is what we're talking about. Vive ne peut se faire qu'au milieu des humains, mais à condition d'être reconnu et accepté par ces derniers. Et l'acte de reconnaissance et les conséquences qui en découlent, le soin, la réciprocité, les droits fondamentaux, peuvent être signifiés par cette citoyenneté mondiale relevant d'une cosmopolitique de, de l'hospitalité. So living uh, can't be done um, apart from being in the midst of humanity, but on the condition of being recognized and accepted by humanity. Uh, the act of recognition and the consequences which, uh, and results which come from that, which include care, reciprocity, fundamental rights, could be signified by this global citizenship, uh, which would then lead to a cosmopolitics of hospitality. Pour, pour élaborer un espace social vaste à l'échelle de l'humanité, il est nécessaire de penser l'acte de reconnaissance et de réciprocité, donc ici la question de l'hospitalité, en dehors des seules ressources des traditions gréco-latines et judéo-chrétiennes. Uh, so to elaborate a vast social space um, on the level of humanity, it's necessary to think of the act of recognition and of reciprocity. Here we're talking about the question of hospitality outside of the only resources of the traditions of the Greco-Latin and Judeo-Christian communities. L'anthropologue sénégalais Abdourahman Sek a proposé trois notions, trois concepts, la teranga, le mboc et le acre pour penser cette question. Le sénégalaise anthropologiste Abdouram Sek, uh, Ab Abdourahman. 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 Abdourahman Sek um, has offered three concepts, la teranga, le mboc et le acre uh, to approach this question. L'approche qu'il propose consiste à partir du principe de réciprocité tel qu'il fut exprimé dans le langage premier des humains, celui de la parenté dans les termes de l'alliance, et ceci parce qu'il fut adopté dans toutes les sociétés comme une condition sine qua non du vivre ensemble. Um, the approach that he is proposing consists of participating from the, or, uh, from coming from a place of the principle of reciprocity, uh, as it is expressed in the first language of humans, that of uh, being a parent, in the terms of uh, um, allyship. And uh, this um, has been adopted in all societies like a condition sine qua non of living together. Abdurrahman Sek fait appel à trois notions qui structurent la sociabilité sénégalaise, la teranga, le mboc et le hak, et analyse leur performativité dans l'élaboration d'un espace social et de l'en commun. Abdurrahman Sek uh, calls, harkens back to three notions which structure um, Senegalese so society, sociability, the teranga, the mboc, and the ak, and analyzes their performativity in the elaboration of a social space and in a common space. Le terme teranga, qui est souvent traduit en Wolof par hospitalité, mais qui signifie également accueil et prestation dans la culture Wolof, renvoie à la notion de réciprocité. The term teranga, which is tra translated as hospitality, but which also signifies welcome or uh, presenting um, in the Wolof culture, uh, harkens back to that notion of reciprocity. 
quand quelqu'un reçoit une teranga où s'en trouve affecté, une teranga en termes de dons, de bienfaits, de bienfaisance, où s'en trouve affecté, il est littéralement lié par cette teranga et doit la rendre en mieux à l'image de la terre et de, et, et de, la, et, et de la semence. So when so, someone receives a teranga um, or uh, finds oneself affected by its presence, um, it is uh, that they are uh, literally uh, bound by this taranga and must uh, give it back uh, at best uh, in the image of uh, the, uh, the earth and um, its uh, beneficence. S'insinue ici la logique du don et du contre-don, son caractère asynchronique est différé. Entre le semer et le rendu, il n'y a pas d'équivalence stricte. Um, so insinuated here is the logic of gift and counter-gift. Um, its character is asynchronous and uh, differentiated between the uh, sowing and the, the reaping or the, the giving uh, doesn't exist in a strict equivalency. En ce sens, la surenchère constitue une moralité du rendu et cela reproduit l'obligation de rendre encore plus. So in this sense, uh, does it mean that surenchère? Bring more. Merci, humor. Uh, uh, the one-upsmanship uh, constitutes a modality of uh, giving back and this uh, reproduces the obligation of giving even more. La teranga est configuratrice d'un périmètre, périmètre spécifique de lien dans lequel on voit opérer l'alchimie qui transforme l'économique en du symbolique. Mm. The teranga is a uh, configuring device of a specific um, perimeter of place in which we see operating the, an alchemy which transforms um, from the economic into the symbolic. Un échange de biens, de biens quantifiables, euh, ne se limite pas et n'est jamais irréductible à la valeur de ce qui est échangé. On ne peut pas réduire un échange de biens ou de dons à la, à la vérité de la valeur des choses échangées. Il se passe toujours beaucoup plus, beaucoup plus est toujours échangé au-delà de la valeur économique et matérielle des biens échangés. Um, so, uh, instead of a quantifiable exchange of material goods, um, it's something uh, completely irreducible to its uh, material value, which is exchanged. Uh, you can't reduce an exchange of goods to the truth of their, uh, their material value. Um, something much more significant is happening. Le terme ou la notion de Mbok en Wolof, qui est souvent mal, malencontreusement traduit en français par la notion de parenté, ou de parentèle, renvoie plutôt à la communauté de partage, ce que l'on partage et ce que l'on a en partage. Um, the term that uh, is signified by Mbok in Wolof um, has unfortunately been uh, translated into French into the notion of relationship or kinship, um, but it's much more about the community of, of sharing of, of this exchange, um, that which is exchanged and uh, that which one has within the exchange. Aussi, le périmètre du lien social et politique du MBOC et le domaine de l'inclusif, de la participation, de la protection, du partage sur fond d'ouverture continue et reproductive. As well, the uh, border of the social and political um, bond is Mbok. Uh, so it's the, it's the territory of the inclusive, of participation, of protection, of sharing on the uh, continuous and reproducible uh, basis of uh, this openness. Le dernier terme, la notion de hack, renvoie au domaine du dû, du prix et du coût, chaque chose et chaque être en dispose ou en est favorisé. Uh, so the final term of ak um, comes back to the uh, notion and the, the territory of um, a, a given. Um, each show, each thing and each being um, 
takes advantage of this and um, is, is favorized by, by this exchange. Cette notion fait appel à un univers sémantique qui est celui de la justice, de l'équilibre et de l'équité. Par extension, le mot « acte » évoque l'idée de la dignité d'une chose ou d'un être, sa reconnaissance pleine en tant qu'entité suffisante à elle-même et devant dûment être reconnue comme telle, ce que l'on doit à cette chose ou à cet être. Um, this calls back to um, a second um, semantic universe, which is that of justice, of um, balance and equilibrium of equity. Uh, by extension, the word ak of, um, evokes the idea of the dignity of a thing or of a being. It's um, recognition full, it's full recognition as a, a sufficient entity unto itself. And before, uh, being recognized as such uh, this which um what that which is owed to this thing precisely that which is owed to this thing or this being alors si on ramène cette notion à la question qui nous intéresse donc celle de, de l'hospitalité donc le hack ici va renvoyer à ce que l'on doit à l'humanité des uns et des autres donc le hack renvoie à ce que nous devons à l'humanité des uns et des autres donc la reconnaissance et le soin et l'hospitalité serait une expression de, euh, de ce hack. So, uh, as it pertains to what we're speaking about here, um, hospitality is an expression of this hack, what we owe to each, each other and to ourselves. Le hack adjoint à notre besoin de jouissance une conscience du besoin de l'autre. The hack um, is... Uh, joined with our need of, of pleasure, a, a conscience of the other. Du reste, c'est à cette condition que la jouissance apprivoise euh, sa part d'ombre. C'est le risque de prendre part de vers soi ce qui ne nous est pas dû, le hack de l'autre. Mm. Um, so this um, rejoicing uh, foresees its um, own shadow, the risk of uh, taking il s'agit donc enfin à travers l'acte d'hospitalité donc si on pense au acte de se garder de prendre une part de vers soi la part de vie de l'autre So here it's about, um, through the uh, act of hospitality, it's this arc of um, taking care of and um, guarding uh, uh, for, for oneself the um, uh, necessity and the importance of the life of the other. En guise de conclusion, je vais finir uh, en quelques lignes, en quelques phrases sur la construction de monde commun. Um, so, uh, just as a conclusion, I'm going to finish up with a few thoughts about the construction of a common world. Il est nécessaire de faire monde, de le faire différemment. It is necessary to create a, a world and to create it differently. Il est possible de faire monde par la négative. Les pandémies, les crises écologiques nous amènent à faire monde par la négative. It's possible to create a world out of negative things, such as the pandemic or ecological crises. Le constat des fractures, des risques, des déliaisons dont nous faisons collectivement l'expérience et ainsi que leurs leur conséquences écologiques, sociales et politiques est éloquent et nul n'est besoin de trop s'y étendre. Uh, the um, existence of fractures, of risks, of uh, disruptions, as well as the consequences of these past several uh, decades, um, including ecological, social, and political, is undeniable. Um, there's no need to uh, list them out. <laughs> La communauté nationale, qui est notre référent premier, je dirais même notre référent atavique, s'est construite sur le couple mémoire oubli. The national community, which is our first uh, point of reference, I could even say our atavistic point of reference, is constructed on the uh, binary of memory and forget forgotten. Pour construire la communauté globale, 
ou mondiale, il s'agit de sortir de la prison conceptuelle et imaginaire de la nation et de l'État-nation. Uh, to construct the global community, uh, we must get out of this conceptual and imaginary prison of the nation and the nation state. Et pour cela, la question de la nature des récits à produire pour fonder cette communauté mondiale est fondamentale. And for this, the question of uh, the nature of storytelling, uh, which needs to be produced to uh, found this global community, is absolutely fundamental. L'une des difficultés pour construire un monde commun est liée au fait que nous n'avons pas une mémoire commune. Chaque groupe humain fonde sa mémoire sur une histoire singulière, même si l'histoire globale existe. Uh, one of the difficulties of creating a common world is connected to the fact that we don't have a shared common memory. Each group is basing a memory on their own particular history that prevents us from having a global memory. Il me semble qu'une communauté mondiale à construire nécessite un récit tourné vers le futur et qui anticipe sur le destin commun de l'humanité. Seems to me that a global community uh, must necessarily be constructed by a story that is uh, turned and projecting towards the future and which is anticipating all the um, possible common destinies for humanity. La collapsologie, l'écologie, le transhumanisme sont de tels récits. Um, the uh, thinking about collapse, thinking about ecology, thinking about transhumanism, uh, transhumanism are uh, some examples of these stories. Cependant, certains de ces récits configurent une communauté de destin par la négative. Mm. However, several of these stories um, conceive of our destiny in a negative fashion. Il manque à l'édifice un récit fondé sur une heuristique positive qui nous fera désirer faire un monde commun. Um, it is lacking the structure for a story founded on um, a positive outlook uh, or prognostic which would um, allow us to desire and to create a common world. Si on postule un lien de continuité entre les corps individuels, les corps sociaux et les écosystèmes, le cosmopolitique de l'hospitalité implique également de penser de nouvelles ontologies relationnelles à l'échelle du vivant. If we um, can imagine a link of continuity between individual uh, bodies as well as social bodies and ecosystems, a cosmopolitics of hospitality um, necessitates uh, thinking of new ontological relationships to, for the next level of our life that we are trying to attain. Mais cet aspect des choses, je le réserve pour une autre fois. Je vous remercie de votre attention. But for this aspect of things, I'll save it for another time. Thank you very much for your attention. Et un grand merci pour la traduction. <laughs> Le Wolof, ce n'est pas évident. <laughs> C'est vrai. <laughs> merci. Thank you so much, Felwin, and thank you very much, Amalia. We just got the text only this morning, about two hours before the talk. <laughs> I think it's really impressive, in fact. Um, that was uh, really speaking maybe to the need of utopia, Felwin, or maybe uh, redefining utopia. But I would like to have Ashiel's um, response, and then we will take questions. Um, you can send me uh, questions privately in the chat if you want to prepare for the continuation. So, Ashiel? Bon, alors, euh, euh, vous, vous l'aurez vous-même constaté, euh, Felwin nous a euh, fait don. Euh, en réalité d'une leçon ma magistrale. Um, so, as you have already uh, noticed, no doubt, uh, Fedwin just gave us a, a gift and a, um, a magistral lesson of, uh, of, this, of this subject. Et je, je fréquente Fedwin intellectuellement depuis euh, plusieurs années. Euh, il me surprend toujours et il m'a beaucoup surpris ce soir euh, euh, par la, la richesse du, du propos, par le, la subtilité de la, la pensée, euh, euh, la rigueur de l'argumentation, une argumentation très serrée, euh, sans compromis, euh, la diversité des archives, 
qu'il a, euh, disons, convoqué, euh, et puis la densité des propositions euh, qu'il a faites. Um, I've, long, for a very long time, um, uh, intellectually uh, followed Fidwin's work, and he always surprises me, um, not only for the richness of his arguments, but also the subtlety of his thoughts, um, as well as the rig rigor of the way in which he presents them through his arguments, always um, very focused, very sharp, uh, without making any compromises. I also really admire the diversity of the references that he brings, as well as the density of each uh, subject that he approaches. Et donc, comme il l'a dit lui-même euh, au début, euh, ce qu'il nous a présenté ce soir est euh, en réalité le prolongement de d'une réflexion qu'il mène depuis très longtemps, euh, dont il a euh, présenté les premiers résultats dans un petit livre qui s'appelle Habiter le monde. Mm -hmm. Um, as Felwin said at the start, um, this is in reality um, going even further with a train of thought, a reflection that he has been pursuing uh, for a very long time and which he presented his very first thoughts on in a little book called um, Habiter le monde. Et je suis également ravi de retrouver dans la présentation de ce soir un certain nombre de, de pistes uh, que nous avons uh, Disons, dont nous avons discuté euh, euh, dans le cadre des ateliers de la pensée euh, avec des, des collègues, des compagnons comme Suleiman Bachir Diagne, euh, Yala euh, Kisukidi, euh, la critique de l'hospitalité faite par exemple par Elsa Dorlin, euh, Ousmane euh, Abdurrahman Sek et, et beaucoup d'autres. Cela montre euh, un tout petit peu, disons, ce que l'Afrique. Euh, apporte la réflexion sur le devenir de notre monde. Um, and so I'm so happy to find again several of these um, thoughts that uh, we have debated amongst ourselves and discussed previously in um, different um, workshops and as well as uh, the work of several colleagues uh, esteemed to me as well as others. Um, specifically critiques of the hospitality by as Elsa Dorlin, and I'm sorry I missed a few names, um, but I am also uh, delighted that this can, this uh, work has the opportunity to show just a little bit all that Africa has to bring to this conversation around hospitality. Around the, 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 um, the future of, of our world. And the future of our world. Yes. Um, alors, le problème avec Felwin, c'est que j'ai j'ai de la peine à, enfin j'ai de la peine, je, je n'arrive pas à, à, à trouver de désaccord avec lui. C'est pas grave. <laughs> so the problem with Felwin, uh, Felwin is that I um, can't find anything to disagree with him about. Et, et je, je, je le dis sincèrement, je, je suis d'accord avec le constat qu'il euh, qu pose au début. Euh, le constat selon lequel... Euh, le, le coût humain des politiques de contrôle des frontières en Europe, aux États-Unis, mais aussi en Afrique, le coût humain, il ne cesse de s'alourdir. Um, sincerely, I'm absolutely in agreement about how the um, politics of controlling the borders, not only in Europe and the United States, but also in Africa, um, has a human cost that is absolutely um, outrageous. Et donc, euh, euh, la, la violence aux frontières et la violence par les frontières est devenue, euh, comme il le suggère, un des traits marquants de la condition contemporaine. Mm. Uh, and so the violence um, at the borders, as well as the violence created by the borders, has become, as he suggested, one of the most um, significant markers of our contemporary time. En réalité, on pourrait euh, aller euh, plus loin et euh, dire que hein, cette violence, elle prend de plus en plus la forme d'une guerre sociale, mais d'une guerre sociale qui est menée 
sur une échelle planétaire. Um, you could even go further and say that this violence um, has taken the form of a civil war, a civil war that is being waged on a global planetary level. Il suffit de, il l'a d'ailleurs fait lui-même, il, il suffit par exemple de euh, indiquer, il a indiqué les morts, euh, évidemment le chapelet des expulsions, euh, des déportations, euh, l'abolition progressive du droit d'asile, euh, la criminalisation de l'hospitalité, c'est-à-dire que l'hospitalité est devenu dans plusieurs pays, en Europe en particulier, un crime. Euh, on n'est plus à l'époque de Kant. On, on, est, on est bien au-delà de Kant. Et Dieu sait qu'il euh, y aurait des critiques à articuler par rapport à la conception kantienne de l'hospitalité, mais on n'est même plus là. On est à un point où il est criminel d'offrir hospitalité à l'étranger. Um, so, of course, we can indicate uh, how many deaths there have been, how many expulsions, how many deportations, and the uh, progressive abolition of the rights of people in exile even goes so far as to say uh, we've gotten to a point where we have reached a criminalization of the hospitality, of hospitality in Europe in specific, we could point to it as being a, a crime. Uh, it is clear that we are no longer in the time of Kant's writing. We've gone much farther than Kant. And uh, of course, one could you know, lever, leverage critiques at Kant's philosophy, but we're not there anymore. Uh, at, we've come to a point where it is criminal to offer hospitality to a stranger. Alors, il y a euh, euh, un deuxième constat que je partage euh, absolument euh, et qui a très, euh, Felwin l'a évoqué, euh, au fait que le, le gouvernement des mobilités humaines, le gouvernement des mobilités humaines est le moyen par lequel une nouvelle partition du globe est en train de se mettre en place. Mm. Uh, a second thing that I share um, with Fedmin and that I thought he uh, articulated very well is the fact that um, the we have reached a government of um, human mobility and it is a means by which we are creating a new partition of the globe uh, which is uh, in the process of uh, instating itself. C'est-à-dire que l'humanité est en train de être divisé entre d'une part ceux qui jouissent du droit inconditionnel de circulation et de son corollaire évidemment le droit à la vitesse et euh, ceux euh, qui sont exclus justement de la jouissance de ce droit à la circulation et à la vitesse. Uh, humanity is being divided. Uh, on the one hand, you have those who have an unconditional right to travel and to speed uh, the, the, with that. Um, and on the other part, you have those who are necessarily excluded um, from the joy of this right to travel and, and the speed that it provides and offers. Et donc la frontière est le, le marqueur, euh, le marqueur discriminant, si vous voulez, euh, de, de ce ce nouveau partage de l'humanité. And borders are the new uh, discriminatory marker of this new um, division of humanity. Et donc la question que pose uh, Felwin, elle est, elle est réelle, elle est urgente. Uh, comment inventer d'autres façons d'habiter la Terre, la Terre avec T majuscule mm. So the question that Fermin is posing is a real and urgent question, which is how do we invent other ways to live in the world? And that's world with a capital W. I mean, in the world, but, but I'm saying... The earth, <laughs> the <laughs> land. <laughs> and and I'm, uh, I'm introducing the concept of the earth uh, willfully. 
uh, I will show a little bit why uh, in, in a second. So, so uh, uh, it's the world, of course, but it's, it's more importantly, the earth. Uh, should, I, should I continue in, in English <laughs> or in French? We, we shouldn't be torturing our Not translator. Uh, however you prefer. <laughs> I think she's, she, I, I think Amelia has already done great work and it's, it's she has done amazing, done, amazing so, work. So I think Ashil, if you're really comfortable in speaking in English, please do so, you know, I think it's just, uh, uh, it, it could also flow naturally. Uh, yeah. The thing is that I'm, I'm not responsible for anything I say in English, but I'll well, say it. Come in on. <laughs> I'll say it in any case. Okay, uh, Amelia, thanks so much. I'll, I'll try it in, in English. So the, the, the issue Felwin is raising, how can we invent new modalities of inhabiting the earth is an urgent uh, question. How do we make, uh, how do we uh, make sure that uh, the earth becomes um, um, the cradle of the living. And I use the living, I could have used for humans, I use the living precisely to expand our interrogation beyond, let's say, a purely Kantian uh, approach, which is limited to the humans. Uh, Kant in his uh, understanding of hospitality in his theory of hospitality has no space for uh, non-humans. Uh, he has a space for, for, for humans. So how, but Felix is going beyond that. How do we uh, create the conditions for new ways of inhabitation of the earth, which make a space for the uh, diversity and the multiplicity of the living? That is the question uh, as I understood it. And here, it seems to me that he uh, is uh, in a deep conversation with a number of uh, um, uh, theorists uh, who recently have been trying to revisit the uh, concept of the common, concept he, he himself uh, uh, used, invoked a number of times, uh, theorists who have been um, revisiting the uh, question of the ownership of the earth and in the process have been trying to expand uh, a democratic critique of, of global distributive, distributive uh, uh, justice theories. I, I think of uh, the likes of Matthias Ries and, and a number of, of others. Um, so, um, it seems to me that one can um, quarrel a bit with why it is that you you want to hold on to the concept of hospitality. Um, because it seems to me that in face of the uh, issues I have alluded to, the question of the earth, the ownership of the earth, to whom is it that it belongs? Uh, the concept of hospitality doesn't go far enough. It doesn't go far enough because hospitality is really about, okay, uh, sharing my place with others. But it is my place, uh, after all. Um, in Kant, that is absolutely clear. Uh, that place belongs to me. Um, I can let you in, um, I can give you a roof, but the place belongs to me. So hospitality is still written from within a theory of property and a theory of private property and private ownership. Um, dans le sens où il y en a un qui, qui choisit de, de ménager une place pour autrui, mais, mais de ménager une place dans leur propre place. 
la place, elle est la leur, c'est eux qui hébergent, c'est eux qui accueillent, accueillent, mais un autre. So it's still written from within these theories of property, appropriation, ownership, and so forth and so on. But when I convoke the concept of the earth, I call upon the earth precisely as that which, in fact, is inappropriable. It cannot be appropriated, that it is in the, the nature of the earth with capital E to escape any form of appropriation in spite of attempts at doing so. So, um, what I'm uh, referring to here is, is not really the right to hospitality, is the right to existence, is the kind of debt de vie, I don't know how to translate it in English, which if we take the concept of the earth, we politicize it, we radicalize the concept of the earth, it allows us to go beyond theories of hospitality, which once again, uh, it seems to me, are, uh, remain uh, uh, mirrored in uh, um, a philosophy of appropriation, of uh, appropriation and, and, and ownership and, and possession. That was indeed the case, I mean, I was reading uh, for the purpose of this seminar, I had a quick look at uh, the nomos of the earth of the infamous Carl Schmitt and his concept of le droit des gens. The droit des gens was basically the, the right of Europeans. The question was, who is it that the earth belongs to? The response was clear. It belongs to Europe or Europeans. And um, who owning it can then um, in their magnanimity uh, decide to uh, open it up here and there for people who really do not belong. Uh, they don't belong, but we, we tolerate them. Uh, this ideology of tolerance and hospitality derive from that fundamental assumption. So if we are to move in the direction you are suggesting, it seems to me that we have to leave behind both the idea of hospitality and that of le droit des gens, and replace them with uh, the uh, concept of le droit du vivant, the right of the living, which would then be a right that precedes any contract. It precedes, it's beyond any let's say, boundary, national or otherwise. It would be a kind of natal, native right, uh, and droit natal, uh, which comes with uh, the, uh, not only individuals at their own, at their birth, but with the living in, in general. It would cover, of course, humans as well as uh, non-humans. It seems to me that it's in this direction of a, a kind of new planetary consciousness um, that we, we might want to, uh, to, to, to look at, um, uh, which uh, in any case requires us to articulate a kind of critic of hospitality. I have to say uh, um, you, you, you passed over uh, too quickly. So those are uh, my comments. Uh, I don't want to go too long because uh, uh, the presentation was, was extremely rich and I hope that other people will, will uh, pitch in and to offer comments. Uh, yeah. thank you we have many questions, so, so I think it's good if we can let Felwin answer your comments and then maybe we won't be able to take all our questions. So don't, I really, the audience, don't be uh, offense. Um, we, Felwin and I have a faculty meeting at 2.30 p.m. So <laughs> we have this, uh, this time constraint. So Felwin, just. Yeah, I, I, I will respond to actually in English to gain time and, 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 and to allow you know, other questions. I think the first point I want to raise, I want to emphasize is, is that the notion of 
of hospitality I'm building on here is not a Kantian notion. Hamid Kent was just uh, indicated at the beginning to, to, you know, to, to raise this idea of an ethic of responsibility. But here, the notion of responsibility I'm raising is that the, the hospitality is built on a, a, a relationality. It's the relation that produces the hospice and, and the hostess. And it's not the, the fact of being a stranger and, and coming from other way. So hospitality here is the result of a, of a, of a relation. And the idea I'm underlining is that this relation fundamentally must be based on care. It must be based on care because living means to be to be the one who receive care from your environment, your community, because of our dependence, our ontological dependence to our environment, our social environment, but our, our biological environment. So I think probably we can reflect on the on the notion, but the notion is not a Kantian notion. And the second point I want to raise is that this idea of belongings, of ownership of, of earth, uh, I think you're absolutely right to say that uh, fundamentally the land and the earth belongs, if it belongs, I'm not sure that, that it belongs, you know, we are borrowing it for a time, I think in your book, uh, 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 Politique de Ligne Limitée, you have this a beautiful idea of la condition du, du passant. You know, so we are just here for a, a moment. And the question is how to live, you know, how to live in, the, in this place and, and how to live it in, in a better place, but how to build the, the living condition. So I think uh, first one, <laughs> We have this, this question of racial hospitality. And even if we include all the living, the question for me is to figure out how not to be an enemy of the living, how the second etymology of hospitality, hospe, hostis, how we figure out the way of not being hostis to the place that is welcoming us, you know, old ecological question and, and our way of dealing with the Anthropocene, I think we can think in this place, how this, this, this double determination, being the one who is host and being the one who hosts, how are we able to deal with this question by being on the line of the care in the two, you know, in the two extremes. So, so for me, I have a feeling that it's the same thing. And all the questions around economic global justice, the right to live, the right to, the right to benefit from the fruits or the incomes, you know, of, of the human capital and the cognitive capital, the life, the, the, the right to live and to see your dignity or your, or your, or your humanity acknowledged just to, to by the fact that you are a, a human being or a being and you have a fundamental life to live and what are the consequences what are the, the juridic consequences what are the economic consequences of this idea what are the practical consequences of this idea i think we can summarize them around this idea of cosmopolitical hospitality by leaving the homocension commotion and and by going beyond the idea of the locality and the globality you know if in in the antiquity Georgian was one of the first Greek or to think around this idea of, of cosmopolitanism. And cosmopolitanism was just the consciousness to belong to the whole humanity and not only to your specific locality where you come from. And this consciousness of belonging to a global community going beyond your local geography, I think is the main point on this notion of hospitality. I don't, don't want to be too long, but I will leave it here. And if you want to jump on. Okay, Achille, do you want to answer <laughs> to Ferwin's response or should we move to the questions? No, I mean, I have so many opportunities to talk to Felwin. Uh, I think we should let others uh, uh, move in. Thank you so much, Achille. That's, uh, that's very generous of you. So we have a question from Deborah Jensen. 
Um, I'm going to read it out loud. Um, Thank you for this important work. It shows a fascinating interplay between Enlightenment discourse like D'Alembert's preliminary discourse to the Encyclopedia of Diderot on the basic principle and not knowledge in Enlightenment discourses that the other is constantly reduced to my self-knowledge in quotation uh, marks. It also literalizes the geopolitical extrapol- extrapolations that one might derive from historical work on hospitality and related phenomena like perception of the suffering of the other, precisely where Enlightenment work failed to move to direct reflection on home society's dependence on colonial profit and slavery. How does your work here navigate its relationship to the critics of humanism that have mediated humanity's theorizations of world making from post-structuralism onward? That's a long and tough question. I mean, <laughs> first one. Euh, Déborah, je pense qu'en fait la critique de, de l'humanisme mais issue du post-structuralisme, elle a été reprise, je veux dire, par... Par, par un certain nombre de travaux, avec l'idée que cet humanisme-là, en tout cas, qui, était, qui, 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 qui se fondait sur l'anthropoï, l'anthropologie, donc le nous et les autres, tu vois, était un humanisme excluant, et que c'est un humanisme qui, à l'époque, qui n'a pas pris en compte bah, tout le reste de l'humanité, quoi. Donc, donc l'humanitas, je veux dire, tout, je veux dire tout, je, euh, toute la naissance de, de l'anthropologie et de l'ethnologie coloniale était fondée sur cette distinction entre ce qui étaient des anthropoïdes et, et ce qui relevait de l'humanitas, et, et donc une humanité non inclusive. Et je pense que le dépassement que, que l'on peut aujourd'hui envisager, c'est aller vers un concept qui inclut tout le vivant, quoi. et que même cette notion d'humanité distinctive, donc distinctive à l'animalité, distinctive à la minéralité, est de plus en plus remise en cause par des cosmovisions qui ne sont pas nées, je veux dire, de, de l'imaginaire ou de la ou des cosmologies européennes. Donc je pense qu'on évolue vers, voilà, vers soit une reprise du concept ou, euh, ou, ou totalement un, un élargissement ou, ou, son, ou, son, ou son abandon vers un concept beaucoup plus large et inclusif. Quoi. Mais à la fin, je l'ai suggéré à la dernière ligne, mais, euh, mais en fait, le, le propos aujourd'hui, c'était juste de, de réfléchir sur les mobilités quoi, des, des individus entre différents lieux. Mais bien évidemment, c'est une sous-question dans la question plus globale voilà, de, de, la, de, de la catégorie qui, qui, qui nous englobe et qui nous inclut et qui est inclusive. Um, so, uh, for this critique of humanism, um, it's been taken up by a large number of different works, um, and it's uh, founded on the anthropological concept of us and the others, um, and it hasn't taken into account um, the, the rest of the um, society or thought um the but the ethnological the colonial ethnological um conception was definitely founded on this distinction uh so we can imagine um uh getting past this um specific way of thinking about the world and um to instead move towards a vision where we are including uh again tous les vivants all the living everyone who is alive um this is um distinctive um, to, to humanity. And it's, this is a sort of um, Cosmo vision that we can be moving towards that is uh, born um, out of our imagination instead of um, a, a European uh, cosmopological vision that we've already been working with for a long time, moving towards a concept which is much larger and much more inclusive. And as I was stating a little bit at, at my conclusion, I didn't really get into this, but I'm looking at specifically the mobility of individuals and conceiving of um, this con- this uh, notion in a much more global way um, as a, a category that, um, Uh, involves all of us. Um, then we have a question from Nassanin Rosado. Um, I'm wondering how the work of thinkers like Sylvia Winter and Zakia Jackson would just a need to move beyond the category on idea of the human interact with Ferwin Sarr's session about the fact of shared humanity as a basis for his imagined global community. Yeah, I think the question of Nazarene is in the line of one of Deborah. Yes, and, it is. But... Yes, in the line of one of Deborah. And I think we, we are very eager to find new concepts on the assemblage 
of, of, of ecological articulation between human, non-human, and technological artifacts. And probably we are moving toward this kind of new conceptualization of what livings mean and how we can conceptualize it. And I think there is a lot of interesting, a lot, a lot of interesting roads or path come toward that. And I'm very interested in this last year on the uh, on the cosmology of the Latin America that are not that are not built on an evolutionist theory, and with and with this idea that the human are not the term of of the of the evolution of the living, and and that there is a kind of original humanity of all, you know the the mineral, the, the, the vegetal, and they just distinguish, but they belong to a, a, an ontological category that that don't allow us even to say non-human, but probably more than human, et cetera, et cetera. And I think there's a field of interesting attempt to create new notions that are probably outside of these imaginaries and, and, and Sylvia Winters is, is, is one of them. And it, it's an interesting field to explore. I think the naming is absolutely important to change the imaginary and the cosmology on which we build all the categories. And this idea of having a work through semantics notions that open the scope of what we can consider human or living is probably an important field, a pre-field before we build, you know, I will say legal consequences or social consequences of it. So here, epistemology or ontological epistemology is absolutely fundamental. Then Calvin Munfegre has a very interesting and long comment. Um, and, and I think I might, um, yeah, I, I'm going to read out loud, but it's quite long. So trying to condense. It, it is interesting that Ferwin opened the discussion with, his, with an allusion to Kant, it's popping up again, <laughs> who left us with a somewhat incomplete right to hospi hospitality, as Sela Ben Habib pointed out. But above all, he had the intelligence to restate the problem of hospitality from the point of view of relationship. Thus, continuing the reflection began in Habiter le Monde by taking out of its injective confinement to the Greco Latin and Judeo Christian imaginary. In this sense, isn't repoliticizing re hospitality a different way of politicizing the relationships that binds humans together? Above all, by making an effort not to back it up with injunctive frameworks, whether Western or from other thick spaces of humanity, like the African hospitable, which could be an injunction, as Ebusi Bulaga implicitly suggested, if we gave in to certain facilities. Is it possible to make the right to hospitality something that is far from an injunction and therefore possibly counterproductive? Hmm. It's an interesting and a difficult question. I think one of probably you know the difficulties of this, this notion of, of, of hospitality is, is uh, the limit of acceptance by the community that are obliged that will be obliged by a right to hospitality to host people with their archaic I'm I you know I I'm sorry I'm sorry for the term but in but 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 here I'm using archaic in the sense of archaic with these archaic imaginaries of belonging. For me a crucial point is you know all these desire of closeness you know of gathering of be of, of producing the its own identity through a land or geography is, is rooted in the imaginary of belongings of how the community is built and what is the link that tied people to a community. And my sense is that at the same time that we need to reconceptualize this notion of hosting hospitality, we need also to do an important work on the space of imaginaries to be able to allow people to feel that they belong to a larger community. And I think these imaginaries are built at school when you are in the family, in your cultural surroundings, in the in the space of family culture. And I think they, at the same time that you know legal options uh, must be on the table, philosophical option on the table. But I think there is also imaginaries that that must be rebuilt. And it's why for me it's a very 
difficult task, but it's a necessary task. So, so I agree with his his you know his his ideas. But the the point I want to add is that I feel that the question also lies also is in the space of how to regulate the imaginary of who belongs to the community and what is a, a community. How I feel myself belonging to a, you know you, you know to a, a human group or a living group that go much beyond the place where I was born, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and where I feel that I'm a part of. Okay, so now I have to condense and two yes. very quick last questions, and we will have to stop here because you have a meeting, I have a meeting afterwards. <laughs> so um, there's a question about people wondering about concrete example of this new organization, geopolitical organization, cosmopolitical, and cosmopolitical organization you're proposing. Uh, but I guess that's a difficult question because you're more gesturing to work in horizon than... No, no, it's not... But, but concrete examples, just then. And then the second question, mm -hmm. and then you can answer. The second question is about storytelling or the imaginary. Uh, there are multiple questions about the same subject. Uh, you say that it would be central in making world uh, through open sorority with the global citizenship, etc. But people would like to know a bit more about the exact role of this storytelling or this imaginary, um, its political and spiritual role. So, and then we stop after that. Okay, so the first, the first uh, simple example I will give is, uh, is on... So you find it in, in the work of Stefan Zweig, the writer, and he showed that before uh, this first world war in Europe, you could travel across all of Europe without borders, without having a passport, and you could establish yourself where you want. So, you know, we have lost the memory of a world that was a space of, of circulation. If you take the African empire in the, you know, in, in, in the Middle Ages, you take Ghana, you take Mali, People were, you know, were traveling where they want and were establishing themselves where they want. And we have space that, political space that was multi-ethnic, multinational. If the nation has a, you know, a sense, and if you in Latin America, you have space that are multinational spaces. And and one of the difficulties is that this idea of borders is so obvious in our contemporary world that we have forgotten that just one century later and a half we could circulate much more freely than actually. So, so in, in our recent history, we have an example where, where this idea of, of borders were not, were not demilitarized borders as we knew them. But, and, 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 and I think just looking to history, we can probably figure out how we can do it together. To respond to the question of the storytelling, I, I think it's an important question because- uh, I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Thanks. I think I can go. <laughs> okay. So to answer to the question of the stories and the storytelling, and I think it's important to just to figure out that the the, pre, the intellectual prison of a nation state is 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 a legacy of colonialism, is a legacy of the European colonialism. When they left, you know, at that time when they build their nation the state after the, the after uh, what we call in in uh, it, what we call the the peace of westphalia so they so they so, so they they desired to build a peace in, in europe europe was almost homogeneous so you can put a nation on a territory and a state you know it was their specificity their, their anthropological specificity and and the result of their own historical you know uh, uh, processes and most of the, the nation space build themselves on a genus face so they a face turn toward their, their past we have, the same history, we have the same land we, we came from there and a, and a face turn toward a forward looking face where we are going what we want what we want to achieve as a nation when you have people that have different memories my the history of senegal even if the history of Senegambia, of West Africa, is the memory of my belongings, where I am, is not the same history of uh, people who live in, in Belgium or in China. So he built himself on his 
own local and specific history. To build a, a community, in my sense, is easier to build a narrative that is forward-looking. What are, what is the society we want to build? Where, one, where, where do we want to go? How this society, this human society would look like? And this narrative anticipating on a common society that is arriving or we have to build is far easier than a memory that, that belongs to the past. So, so if you have to deal in between these two ideas, having a, a forward-looking narrative to say we are building a, a community of, of humanity or a forward-looking narrative, it seems to me that it's much more easier to build a, a forward-looking narrative to a community that is arriving and to be built than to rely on the past, on the memory that is most of the time specific, even if there is a global history and history is connected, but each individual memory is more often specific than global. Okay, thank you very much, Felwin. I think um, I think we should stop here. Thanks uh, so much for a wonderful talk. I mean, I had a lot of comments, very like uh, people expressing how of your work in in the chat and admiration, and same with with Ashil. So I think that's uh, um, they've been sent to me personally, but I could make copies if you want. So. Thanks so much uh, for another question that has been asked multiple times. Yes, this event is recorded and is going to be uploaded on the Center for French and Francophone Studies website. Um, be uh, note that this uh, site is being completely remodeled at the moment, so it's quite outdated, but it will be updated and you will have all this uh, most of all these wonderful events available. Um, and I would have asked, I would have liked to ask uh, Ferwin a question about the role of cinema in maybe creating Absolutely. imaginary of hospitality, but that will be for another time or performing Absolutely. arts. And I'm sure we will talk about Absolutely. the relation between gesture, performing arts and dance with, with uh, Rachid Nourandan and Sidi Labi Sherkawi on March 31st. So thanks again. And allow me to give a great thanks to Ashley and Amelia and you and, and all the people that attend. Yeah, I think we had a wonderful crowd and very, you know, um, there were too many messages. I, I, so I, I really apologize for that. But maybe we could create a forum on the site and, and find ways for, to continue the conversation. And, and I've forgotten to say that Ashil was participating from South Africa. <laughs> So we've been connecting Europe, South Africa, and the US, which has been just wonderful. Okay, have a, a great day and, and see you for a great night and see you soon. Yes, <laughs> very soon for some of you. Bye.